From the back of the back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. I have been with women from around the world. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you... care about it's another kind of a radio talk program we're the radio talk show it is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon no i am your host write down our telephone number you're gonna need it it's 1-800-5-800-TOM 1-800-5-800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. You don't have to read this article to participate in our conversation, but I want you to read an article. Uh, you can find it by Googling it on the Internet or going to the Atlantic Monthly website, which is theatlantic.com. It's called The Case for Settling for Mr. Good Enough by Lori Gottlieb. And in it, she gives you chapter and verse. She doesn't intend to have this effect, but she does. She gives you chapter and verse the way women think about men they are trying to push into marriage. And essentially, uh, inadvertently lay, lays out all the reasons why men should not get married, especially to single mothers. This article closes the case right here. Any arguments about this, this settles it right now. The idea that you're a single mother because you were waiting for Mr. Wright, now it's time to consider settling for somebody who will pay 60% of your uh, monthly income, somebody who will uh, relieve the burden of child care. Yeah. That marriage is not a passion fest. It's uh, more or less a little corporation, which is what I've been telling you all along. Our telephone number, 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Michelle on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, it's so great to talk to you finally. I've been trying to call you forever because I've been listening for the last six months, and I feel like um, I am the female version of you, although I do believe that my mother is responsible for my situation and the mentality that she has tried to put into my brain and that I am not worth anything unless I have a man. I'm a successful woman in a, con in a law firm who does construction defect. I own a home straight out in Huntington Beach. I am upon my third husband, who is a surfer, and I know now that he has settled upon me, who is 36-year-old woman, single mother of two teenage boys, who I do use your teachings to teach them. And uh, he refuses to get a job, and he's basically just, uh, you know, living the high life in Huntington Beach, surfing all day while I work my ass off. Right, but you didn't think it was so bad when he was the best thing you ever had in the sack, and that's why he uh, got oh, into your my life. Oh, God, he is a god in the sack, but you know what? Well, that's I why, but I see again, I didn't, you notice, I didn't know that about him, but th that's the only <laughs> reason people like that ever get married. <laughs> he just saw me zero mortgage and a nice car, and uh, right. And, uh, and you said, wanted hey, to and... I can settle for this mother of two. Right. And my mother said, hey, he's a nice looking guy. You should go for it because, you know, you need a man to be complete. I wish I could get rid of this guy, but it's going to Why? Me. Why at this age, after having been uh, a failure twice before? I mean, I'm a four time failure at marriage, and I, I realize. This is my third marriage. I know. And I said, I, you, you failed twice before. Why are you still listening to, listening to your mother's advice? You know what? She was in the military the whole time growing up, and she was always the voice. I was convinced by her that she was the voice of reason. Yeah, but but now that you now that you old. have failed twice at marriage, why would you still be taking her advice? Oh my God! You know what? It's I I. It's she's my mother. Don't you understand that, that a lot of hot surfer dudes, hot surfer dudes who are good in the sack, are not husband material? 
I know. But you know what? When you're a mother of two and you work so hard and all you need is a little bit of joy, you fall for it. And when your mom is back... But you could have just had sex. If you make all the money and you're financially successful, you didn't need him. Exactly. But when you're convinced, and I believe that a lot of men out there are also convinced that... They can also not be whole unless they have that family unit. And when a man is a little bit older and balding and maybe a little overweight, and they see that woman who's young with kids, they see instant family, they can satisfy their mom's nagging. It's an instant gratification for them. It's the point. And then they I don't think that's why men get married. married. I think most men get married because they think the women love them. When in reality, women right, think of we, men. Women think of men like this. Uh, Lori Gottlieb thinks of men as someone to help ease the burden, pay the bills, take yeah, well, care of the kid, give her well, a break. You can also see, Tom. You can also see as a man who all he wants to do is have a good time with his buddies and you know smoke dope, and he doesn't have to worry about bills. Why would that guy want to get married? Because then he's then he's good. By the way, what's wrong with smoking dope and you know just uh, paying oh, yeah, your own but bills? It, but yeah, I'd like to do that all day instead of going to work. Well, you, you, uh, by the way, I go to work, but I enjoy partying. I enjoy yeah, well, traveling, I doing court. whatever I want. <laughs> I have to go to court on lawsuits. You well, know, I can't exactly be high all day, which I would. You know, I, I'm a I'm a product of the '80s. Of course, I would love to be able to do that, but I can't. So I'm, I'm miserable. I just want to just, you know, and do what I want to and do, you I know can't. what's going to happen ultimately. As an attorney, you already know this. You're going to have to pay him alimony if if it comes to that. But hey, you know what? With all the extreme sports he does, maybe he'll just, you know, darling. Hey, you know, um, you know what? How long you been married now? Two and a half years. You need me to give you advice? Cut your losses. No, no, uh, no. I don't need you to give me advice. I'm, I'm like, I'm but just, why aren't you I'm cutting your losses? The women out there who but if you listening. know, but now let's go back to you. If you know this is wrong for you, you know that every two days he's there, you owe him another day of alimony. Well, you make me feel a lot better, Tom. Thank you. I'm here to help. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, Tom. You keep doing the work you're doing. You I know mean, you're I'm the one, by the way, boy. you're the one who told me what a loser this guy is. Well, yeah, but he's hot, and he's got a rock and bod. But you didn't have to marry him. He would have had sex with you anyway. Yeah, but if I didn't heard you before I married him, I wouldn't have done it. You, you need to be married. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but the mother, point is, you can, but you can fix me, this. Right. Do you understand? You've already been divorced. Don't make the mistakes I made. Thank you, Tom. Uh, and the I mistake. Let it. me tell you the mistakes I made. Okay, yeah. I especially uh, one of the times when I was married for a particularly long time. I thought I failed in the past. It was my fault, and I'm going to make this work no matter what. Right. Which is what I... you're doing now. Yeah. But it, you, know, you want to know something? Don't take it from the voice. Ta take it from the voice of experience. <laughs> this won't work. <laughs> he will not well, get off the surfboard and start buying himself a suit and tie. It's not going to happen. Right. Not ever. And then the you'll be supporting. You will be through. supporting him. Right. You will be buying his weed for him. <laughs> You're laughing you, now, Tom, but you. I, you know damn well he's sitting all of the, when he isn't on the surfboard. He's he's got the pipe, he's got the bong, he's got his friends hanging out with him all day. I know yep. I, I know this guy. Not <laughs> yeah, I got a nice house in Huntington Beach, and I know what they're doing there right now. Well, he, and, and at some point he's gonna start banging other chicks if he hasn't done that already. Not not unless he wants to use his new you know what because he knows I'll do it. Yeah, but he, you'd have to know. You're so your face is buried in legal briefs and you're always in court. How would you ever know? That's true. You wouldn't. Well, you know what, Tom? I would like to, for you to know that I am teaching my teenage sons your teachings. Yes, but you and need. They will not succumb to the same thing. But you also need to teach by example. Because they see what That's you're true. doing, and you don't want them doing That's what true. you're doing, do you? That's true. No, I do not. I mean, if you get a nice piece of ass, just bang it. Exactly. It's Thank e you. It's easier and to... I've done it in the past. I don't know why I couldn't continue. I blame my mother, which I shouldn't do, because a responsible adult should take responsibility for their own actions. But, 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 come on. Why buy when you can lease? 
Thank you. Like I said, I've done it before. I've dropped off a guy two blocks from his own house because I was like, no, nah, get out. You've had enough. Go. All right. So then, then you know what? You... And he was happy. He was he was stoked, whatever, you uh, know. So, well, But I should have stuck with that. Yes. Well, you need to unload this guy. Because it's right, never, Tom. it's never, ever going to get better, ever. No, no, and I'm just getting older, so, you know, there's nothing, you know, maybe that's part of my problem. I think, well, I'm settling for this guy, or he's settling for me. I don't know. But, darling, if you're going to settle, look, you're missing the point of the article. If you're going to settle for somebody, settle for a responsible individual. I, who, yeah, who isn't that hot in the sack? Was? A hot, responsible guy isn't going on a 36-year-old mother. There are no hot, responsible. Don't you understand? That's true. There's, There's hot no guys hot and responsible women, right? guys. I mean, this is why, you know, women do this all the time. Uh, the, the, they, while they're married to Poindexter, the head of the IT department, uh, they think back to all the hot guys they had in the past, the really hot guys. Uh, the ski instructor, the scuba instructor, the struggling actor, the struggling musician, uh, the bodybuilding champion, the Hall of Fame baseball player who hangs out in the South Bay. You know what I'm talking about. Yes, they think, I do. They think back to all the hot guys they had in the past before they had to live with Poindexter, who's got the pocket protector and everything. But the fact is, Poindexter shows up at home on time, and he puts money into his IRA and his 401k, at point, you don't have to be checking Poindexter's text messages to see who he's chatting with because nobody else wants him. You know what? I'm guilty. I've done it. I've checked the text messages. I've done it. Uh, well, <laughs> and you've only been married a short time. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. You're a blessing. Don't <laughs> let anyone ever tell you different. All right. God sent me here to help. Tom Lightis. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I've been gone from her for about two years now, and it is just clear saying it is worth it. Now I go out all the time with different girls. It's a blast. Now, I don't know what I was thinking, imprisoning myself. It's the Tom Lightis Show. Yeah. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Ashley on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I've listened to your show since uh, I've actually known my husband. Um, we're swingers. We don't believe in denying each other the right to have sex with whomever we want. Mm-hmm. Just because, you know, it's human nature. Why am I going to stop him from doing something? And, and, and let me ask you a question. Which trailer park do you live in? Is that the one down on, uh, where is that? <laughs> you know, actually, the trailer park that I live in is actually pretty fabulous. We even had indoor plumbing and everything. Wow. Um, but, no, you know, I was in the military, and I know that temptation does get really bad. But at the same time, if you have someone that understands you completely. But why do you, need to be, why do you need to be married? Um, you know what? It's something. We got married just, I know it sounds really bad, but we got married for the money. <laughs> Um, uh, well, I know, it, but at the same time, it wasn't it doesn't like... doesn't sound really bad. It is really bad. Well, we like, that's the thing. We love each other, blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, well, but you'll find out years from now that you really don't love each other. You're 20 years old. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, no, that's... Well, I do, like, I've been through so much in my life, and I know you're the same, blah, 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 I'm 20 years old, but... Oh, I yes, I know you've been not, through so it, much in your life, yes. I know, there's just so much... What exactly have you been through, dear? Why don't you tell us what you've been through? Um, well, let's see. I've had the one of the most best friends I've ever had die on my birthday. He died on my oh, birthday. Oh, wow. I've had to deal with... That's hard. I know you're going to say, whoop, whoop, cry me a river. But I figured... I love oh, this guy. Then certainly, you know, then certainly you know enough about marriage and relationships to, to have a fully formed, mature relationship. Oh, yeah, well... Based on that... Um, no, we've been together. We understand each other. And why not spend the rest of your life with you, with someone? That because you're, you're not with? going to. You know, 80% of these marriages end in divorce. 80. 8-0. Eight, 8-0. Zero. Eight, zero. You know, We're the exception. We love each other unlike any couple ever on the face of this earth. That's the thing, Tom. We I'm love, love, love each other. People don't understand us. Uh, that's the thing. I don't. I don't think we're the exception. I just think that we, nobody gonna... knows. I mean, what about the eighty percent? What about them? They're getting divorced, but not you. 
Because oh, yours is a very special love. Yes, the two of you understand love in a way that no two human beings have ever understood love. And while you have sex with other people, it's a deep and abiding love that will last for the ages. You'll be married 60, 70 years together because of your deep understanding of human relationships. Isn't that true? No, I'm not saying that we're going to be married forever. So, so why are you married now? For the money. And then you'll get divorced? Is that it, darling? No, that's the thing. I didn't plan on getting, I didn't plan on getting married. He's the one that wanted to get married. So why'd you do it? Um, partly because of the money and... Be- the so, in is- other words, because you are too lazy to go to a school, study, and earn money... Oh, uh, no, no, no. I make oh, money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why do you need, need, why do you need more money? Why do you need the taxpayers to be subsidizing you? Oh, it wasn't even that. I just wanted a new car. Yeah, but you couldn't go out and earn it yourself. Oh, no. That's, I went and it earned it myself. We didn't get married until after I was in the service. So what I've do you need the, the money for? I wanted a new car. <laughs> and but, I know that sounds really shallow and whatever, but the world is shallow. So you got married to get a car. No, I got married because I do care about him, and he does understand. Yeah, but you just so said to me that you will not stay married to him. You just said it. Well, I'm going to stay married as long as possible. I'm not saying that. that I, no, 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 darling. When you took wedding vows, it was not to, to stay as married as long as possible. It was not that you were going to stay until you your series got canceled by the network or whatever. You promised to get married forever. Well, that's the thing. I'm not... Forever. Do you know how long forever is? Forever is... Till death do you part. That means until you're dead. You said that. Well, then what what bad would it do if I was in the service and I was going to die anyway? Might as well go out with a brand new car, right? (sighs) This is the kind of immaturity I'm talking about, and you're demonstrating it right here. Well, that's what you want to hear. You know know how I get a new car? I work for it. I work for it, too. No, you don't. You got married for it and got benefits you wouldn't have gotten otherwise, rather than working and paying for it that way. Benefits? Benefits of what? I love my husband. You just said you got married for the money. You said it. I didn't say it. Yeah, you did. I did, get, I did get married for the money because in other words... That means that the taxpayer long. is subsidizing you. Well, I don't know. I just wanted to make the point that we're married. We're, we're but in but a you're gonna get divorced, which you've already admitted. You've already admitted to. At some point, you'll get divorced. So you don't take marriage seriously at all. Those vows were a joke. No, they weren't. Yes, they were. You said till death do us part, and now you admit that you will get divorced before death does the two of you part. Well, I'm not. Well, that's the thing. I'm not going to be unrealistic and say that love lasts forever. Well, then why did you real. take a vow like that? I took, you know what, you're right. I don't know why I took that vow, except for the Because you're that, a liar, and because you're too lazy to earn money on your own. You, the, you found the shortcut to doing it. By lying and taking an oath that you had no intention of keeping, and then taking to your mouth. You didn't earn it. You got married. You got married to somebody you're planning on divorcing, and you better not use that word on the air again. I don't consider... I don't, I don't consider care what you consider. I don't consider going overseas and fighting for your country not earning your money. Uh, uh, again, you you could have gone overseas and fought and earned your money, but you went you went a step further. You got married to somebody under false pretenses, which, by the way, is a uh, violation of the UCMJ. No violation of the UCMJ is if you. Why don't you tell your commanding then... officer that you don't plan to stay married, that you got married for the money? Why don't you say it to him and see if you get court-martialed? He won't court-martial me because he probably has done it to his own wife. Well, but you admit, though, that it is a violation of the UCMJ. It is a violation. You of the just UCMJ. admitted that you, no, you got no. married uh, for the military benefits, for the money. And that's a violation of the rules. If you, if you get divorced right away. No, no. You, you just admitted. You pretense, just then... admitted you got married under false pretenses. You just admitted it on the air. No. If I were to go. Yes, and you did. To somebody, no. You got admit. You had just admitted that your plan is to get divorced. You will get divorced at some point. No, I didn't say I planned on getting divorced. I said that I'm a realist. I understand that love sometimes mm. doesn't last forever. Mm-hmm. How am I going to. Why am you I just said you got life? married for the money. 
Yeah, why not get something extra? Because it's illegal, dear. People do illegal things. Fine. Day. Yeah, well, uh, then why don't you tell your commanding officer what you did? Like I said, he'll say the same Well, thing. I, I'll tell you what. Let's find out. I'll tell you what. We'll call him right now. Oh, and you're going to sit there and tell why him not? Why not? Why don't we just talk to him? We can call the Pentagon, and we can see if they sign off on what you did. They signed off? Well, when they signed the check, they really much signed off on what I did, especially well, they I've don't. Married over they a don't year. know what you did. They don't know that you just went on a national radio show and admitted that you got married to get benefits. <laughs> Hopefully they're tracing the call right now. 1-800-5800-TOM. Sleep well tonight, dear. And now they're done uh, listening in at Elliot Spitzer. You never know what they're doing next over there. 1-800-5800-866 is our telephone number. It's Nick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? I'm doing okay. Hey, I got to let you know, I called you probably about three years ago before my first daughter was born, and um, I kind of explained the situation, you know, living with the parents, you know, I got a baby coming, blah, 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 and your reply was, it's over for you. And I was like, no, it's not. And you're like, don't even kid yourself, blah, 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 blah. It's over if you don't get the abortion then. So long story short, three years later, two kids still together, life's over, or actually having a hard time. Hi, baby. But, but by the way, you knew more than me, right, when you when you called right, in? Right, right, right. Yes. No, 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 you don't know you're talking about, Tom. No, no, no. Dude, trust me, I got it covered. Right, right. Don't even trip, Tom. No, your life's over. You don't know what you're talking about. Long story short, you're right. I was wrong. I'm learning. So to make matters worse, hold on, give me a moment. I'm actually going outside. I just got home right now. So, all right, to make matters worse, you know, nothing changes. The wife, the, yeah, that's funny you caught that. The wife ended up getting married, you know, just to make things better and do the right thing. And that's, that's a bunch of crap because it, it just, it doesn't. Things get worse. And, you know, I'm coming to realize that. And everybody else that you talk to or call your show should know that nothing's going to change, especially for the males. Dude, nothing is going to change. It's going to get worse. And you're just digging a hole, and it's it's going to get worse. You think getting married is going to help you? It's, it, 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 just, it doesn't happen. It's not going down like that. You know, essentially you get married, and everything that is yours or that you're working for is going to become hers, half hers, which is get inside. Oh, boy. <laughs> By the way, not necessarily half hers. Uh, that Jared guy from the Subway commercials, according to the National Enquirer, it's 60% hers and 40% his. <laughs> That's not half. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Edwin on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, uh, hey Tom. Uh, I, need your, I need your help, man. Uh, I'm 24 years old. I got two more semesters. Uh, like you said, you know, I got to earn my money. I want to work for it. I'm, I'm a hard worker. I want to be a registered nurse. And I got involved with this one girl that she claimed to be, she's Christian, and so am I. And she said she was a born-again virgin. I never heard any woman say something like oh, that. Oh, so in other words, she had sex with all the other guys she was hot for, but she's drawing the line with you. Exactly. And after I've, you know, that should have been the day you said goodbye, Edwin. But of course, you didn't. I didn't. And I took, you know, I took that as, you know, she changed and everything. After I find out that she pretty much knows everybody in the church, and all the guys in the church are her brothers in Christ, and she's all flirty with everybody, and just the way she dresses. Well. And now she's, I mean, she's five years older than me. She's twenty. She's going to be twenty-nine. And uh, she tells me either, you know, you're going to marry me or uh, that's it with us. And this Great. is the she loves me and everything. Well, here's your opportunity. Of course, you won't take it. Say what? So this is your opportunity to get out. Okay. You're right. I mean, she's, I found out that she's having so much difficulty with her mortgage and everything. She bought a house. 
and she just has a job. She hasn't even finished her. And she's waiting for you to come in and pay for it. She told me that. She's like, Are you, uh, would you mind coming and living in this house? I'm like, I won't move in with no girl. The girl moves in with the guy, but if I'm your husband, I don't see any problem with that. Now that I'm calculating. So you're supposed to move in and pay the mortgage and not get sex like all the other guys got. I mean, I'm already. She, she what a deal. She to me after six months. And every now and then, uh, one day she's listening to Christian music. She's telling me it feels good, but it doesn't feel right. I barely get it. Maybe twice a, I mean, uh, twice a month. That's like once every two weeks or so. Oh, so you have had sex with her? I've had. I mean, so she's a born again virgin year. who will only have sex with you twice a month. Say what? She's a born again virgin, but she will have sex with you twice a month. That's, that's what I'm saying, and she, she, she either does She's it. totally lying to you. You know what? She just wants you to pay the bills, and she's probably having sex with other guys. I'm pretty sure. I mean, she's... So, so why are you still there? Because she tells me she loves me. You, you're, you're, you're a fool. I know, man. I mean, she already threatens me. I mean, in Christianity, it says the guy goes and finds the woman. You're a fool. You're a fool. You're a fool. You think I should just? If, I mean, she threatened me and she hung up on me. I'm telling you, you're not. You're not listening to me. Are you listening to me? What? You're a fool, and you should be out effective immediately. So what shall I do? Change my number? I mean, you tell me what to do. Let's. I'll we'll call her. We will call her right now. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll call her, and we will settle this matter right now. All right. All right. All right. All right. Hang on there, Edwin. If I'm blessed enough to meet my soulmate, why would I go and blow it with marriage? It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likens show from Hobby Win at 1 800 5800 Tom. In case you're just tuning in, this all started with an article in Atlantic Monthly called The Case for Settling for Mr. Good Enough by someone named Lori Gottlieb. And uh, here she is, a single mother, suggesting that uh, women should just settle so you find somebody to help you with the child care and pay the bills, play catch with your little bastard child. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. All right. Uh, where is Edwin, Dean? Okay, Edwin is there. Edwin? Yes. Okay, we've got you and uh, on the other line. Are you ready? Yes. We've got Erica on the line here, so uh, let's put her on the air. Sure. Erica. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, I'm okay. This is Tom Likas. Have you heard our show before? No, it's the first time. Yeah, Dean explained that we were going on the air and have a conversation, and uh, we're talking right now with Edwin. Say hi to Edwin. Hi, Edwin. Hello, Erica. Now, Edwin, tell Erica what we were talking about. Uh, about uh, you, just in general, that don't want to, you know, I'm wasting your time. If uh, I don't want to marry you or anything, and I should either get you the ring. And be engaged with you and be married just the way, you know, just because of the reason that you got involved with me from the first place. And if not, you have no problem of letting me go and you haven't even, uh, you hung up on me and you turned off your phone on me. And uh, you and you still tell me you love me and I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you want to air dirty laundry on the air, huh? Well, it's more than that, Edwin. Uh, did, you, did you tell them why I hung up on you? Why don't you tell us, Erica? I think it was after he called me a slut. Are you a slut? Not at all. Well, here's what Edwin told us. Edwin told us that you've told him you're what you call a born-again virgin. Did you say that? Uh, I was for five years until I met him. So you're not one anymore, but you only have sex with him about twice a month, he says. Is that right? <laughs> I 
Wow, Edward, I can't believe you put us on air to discuss all this. Well, stuff. I mean, obviously he's he's not getting any answers. He had to go somewhere. So is that true, twice a month? Um, You know what? Because I'm a Christian and I'm not a perfect person and we fall and then... So every I time you're having sex again. with him, it's a mistake. Is that right? Uh, I'm sinning. I know that. I do acknowledge that. I see. So you think if you only sin about twice a month, it'll be okay? No, I never said that. So why do you keep doing it? Well, it's when when your flesh is stronger than your spirit, and and you slip and fall. But I serve a forgiving God, you know, and I don't. I'm not trying to live in sin with Him. Mm, but you are. Yeah, we have been. Uh huh. And uh, he says also that it's his opinion that you flirt with the other guys in your church. Not at all. You don't at workplace at workplace. I mean, yesterday you tell me you have a you go to work late half an hour. You forget your bag. I didn't and, go to work a half hour late. I and, got stuck in the lobby for half an hour because I left my badge. Because you're not responsible enough to take your badge with you. And when I come to work to. Make it up, I mean, you know, to all those guys that don't let you uh, in the access in the building and parking and this and that. And you tell me about this other Assyrian guy who you found out his name, and I'm telling you why you're socializing with somebody. I find out his name. I don't know his name. I, he had an accent. He was helping me get signed into work, and I asked where he was from. He said he was Assyrian. I said, so is my boyfriend, which is my ex now. Our, our and he has conversations with women. He has double standards. He's extremely jealous. He's I emotionally unstable. I have, I have conversation with my classmates, and I don't even Honey, take their numbers anymore because of you. Anymore? I never knew you did. I never did. I did once. And should I probably start away. again. I told you. Okay, well, um... She's at work, I, I gave it. I gave it my best. I loved him with all my heart, and he didn't respect me. He doesn't, you know. He doesn't I respect. Mean, it's a nasty but but right you but you limit the sex to twice a month, and you tell him he's limited because you were born again virgin. Wait, I'm sorry. What? So you limit the sex to about twice a month. You uh, you blow him off the rest of the time. Is that right? On the weekend. No. He's comfortable with just laying in sin. I'm not. I still get convicted you're comfortable? about it. I'm comfortable. Wow. See, she's doing you a favor because yeah. you're comfortable with this. Yeah, you know no, what? he tells I'm not comfortable me, well, then. You, then you is should, that you it? Should, you shouldn't have given it up then, you know, so. Given what up? Sex? I sex with him in the first place. Oh, That's no, he wants to have sex with you. He wants to have sex with you more often. No, I don't want to. I don't even want to have sex with her anymore, when, man. When I, when oh, I'm I will married, tell her. Tell her. I'm going to have a fabulous sex life with my husband. My husband won't have any complaints. And your husband will be who? Whoever happens to be that blessed man. <laughs> blessed man? You, I mean, if I was, then why did you give it to me? Or was... Was I more important than Jesus that you gave it, you know, up to me? Or I don't know why you're sending all these mixed messages. I don't know why you called me at work to I did not call you at radio. work. They got information, but this is the truth. I have said nothing but the truth. And you're saying, like, what? Well, you don't even answer my calls anymore to settle this. All right, Edwin, let's settle it right now. Tell her. Tell her what you told me. What shall I tell her? It's over. Tell her. Erica? He doesn't, he doesn't have to tell me. I already know. And I'm fine I'm with it because I've accepted it. She didn't call me back. I thought maybe we've been long enough together so I could um, speak to her. But Tom, do you, I wish there was a way you can call my cell phone and listen to the message he left me. He's so disrespectful. I wore a How dress so? on Sunday. I wore a dress on Sunday that went past the back of my knees, but when I walked, it reached above the back of my knees, and he almost had a heart attack on Sunday. He had a panic attack. We got well, this is to be expected when you are a religious type and you date other religious types. You know, that's part of the game. That's part of the package. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. You put it all out. You advertise for other men. I'll tell you, one time I told you never nothing to me. I'll tell you, when you have a man, you got to respect yourself. you got to dress appropriate, especially when you claim me as your man. I mean... That's not dressing like a whore. That's not disrespecting you. Why don't you obey my... Why, why you, uh, you didn't... You know what? Stop You're wasting it. your breath, Edwin. I'm no longer your concern. I'm not. I'm, I was talking to Tom. I had well, to... Why did Tom's have... friend call me and, and take me off of the phone when I have things to do? Well, over, get back to your work over. and God bless you and uh, I pray for your soul. Uh, thank you so much. You're welcome. There we go.
Another satisfied Tom Lyka show customer. Yes. And she's a born again virgin now until uh, she meets someone else. And she'll let him have sex once in a while. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Lisa on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. I just, I just see that there's just a common situation with all these people. And I mean, it's human nature. Everybody is so selfish and self absorbed, but they won't admit it. And they, even whether it's a man or a woman, all of the people who have called in, they all expect to get something for nothing. And they expect, like one guy was saying, Oh, he thought it was going to get better when he got married. But yet, he wanted, I'm sure, to keep all of the things that he had already, but not put anything in. But things and don't get better when you get married. They are well, the exact I, same. Well, I think that's the key. You shouldn't get married if you're just wanting that other person to give you something. If it's just... You that. shouldn't get married if you're a man, period. Well, I don't, I disagree. I'm married and I have to say that I did not want to get married. My husband asked me to marry him several times and I said Just no. because he was afraid you'd have sex with someone else and for no other reason. No. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's funny. But no, it's, I have to say there's very few occasions where you actually do. You mean no other man wanted you? Actually, I've been... A few people have asked me to marry them. Well, that's my no point. Person. He doesn't want another man to have sex with you. Well, that's true. I don't want to have another. I don't want another woman. But that's to why he married you. I. Think that's he why he made an issue out of it because he was jealous and he was afraid you might go out with someone else. You could be right, but the end result was a good one, thank God. And no, because you're a woman, and uh, it, it, it pays off for women to get married. No, actually, I I work very hard. I've worked since I was 15 years old. So I never stopped working. Fine, do doesn't well. negate what I said. No, that's true, but I didn't marry my... The point is, when I married my husband, we both had zero. Neither, neither of us were... Doesn't married. matter. You're not going to have zero forever. No, One day, he, you'll have a kid, and you'll want somebody to take some of the burden off, and it'll be him. Oh, no. I already have two children, and... Two I, children at 22? I got married very young. How old 18. were you? I was 18 when I got married. Oh, there. Jesus. But I'm very happy, and honestly, I have to say... The whole point is that when you marry someone, you have to be in love with them and be happy sharing things with them. If you already feel a burden because this other person is like dead weight to you, I mean, come on. Why do you oh. think, just just your opinion here, why do you think 80% of the people who got married at the age you did get divorced? I think it's because they're unrealistic. I think they think everything's going to be, you know just lovely and everyone's going to be in love and everything's going to be good. And well, if it isn't, why you... get married? Well, it is a lot of the time, but life itself, whether you're married or single, it's never perfect. And there are No, but it's things... a lot better when you're not married. I would tell you right now, I've been married, uh -huh. I've been single, and I can tell you it's a lot better for a man when you're not married. Well, for you, for you as a man. For men, better. for men in general. There are there are exceptions to every rule, but uh, yeah, I'm telling you, generally speaking, men are better off and, frankly, happier when they're not married. I would say that's true if you're talking about a man who is, you know, very into what he's doing and happy being on his own and happy doing his own thing. That's very true. If you're talking about a man who likes to share, who wants a family, who wants that and needs that, then that's a different thing. He could situation. do that without getting married? There's benefit to you, there's a benefit to the child, but there's no benefit to him. I don't agree on the child portion. I think that, I don't know, I don't think it's the same if you are not married and you have... I, I just said there's a benefit to the child, but there's no benefit to the man. Well, the, I, to you as a man, there's not. No, I to men in I general, think... there's no benefit. There's nothing a man can get from being married that he can't get from being unmarried. Well, he can hold his head high, and he can, if he's a Christian man, he can say to his son that. Oh, so this is a religious him. issue. Well, I think it's a for me, it's a religious and moral issue. I mean, me, I have to say, my parents were not married, and I have to say that that. So you that, you were a virgin when you got married? Yes. Holy cow! But I don't have the because of that. I don't have a need or a want. I don't have any 
I don't know, any need or want. I don't ever look at any man and think, oh, my gosh, I wish I, I don't know. I Probably don't including know. your husband. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.